I want to welcome you to our weekly prayer meeting. The middle of the week, a time when we all need a, a spiritual break, a time to pull away from the cares of the world, our personal demands of our life that call on us and perhaps distract us from knowing the Lord sometime. Now, I appreciate Stan Eldridge going to be sharing this evening. And uh, it's great to see Stan up and around because a little over a year ago, he had to go back in with a knee replacement to redo it because of infection, went through a lot of difficulty and uh, doing well. And want to remember him or appreciate that and remember Nan as she continues to get strong from her recent challenges physically. And then, of course, Mike will be sharing. So I'm not going to read a scripture. I'm going to share some prayer requests and lead us in a time of prayer. So I've got these divided in two different things. One is our nation and the world, and then particular people that I feel like I can share their names, their situation, which will trigger in your mind and heart and mine uh, thinking of others on your own list, in your own circle that you can include in the prayer. So certainly our nation, the election is over, but still a lot of divisiveness as you know, of course, the terrible situation going on of just talking about impeachment and seeking that and the, the riots, the riot last week the, on the Capitol, the, just the overflow of emotion still affecting our nation, which honestly, truthfully, still affects us one way or another, friends, family, opinions, that's still an issue that, as I preached last Sunday, let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, where God's agenda will prevail, but he's left us here to be stewards of the world, to, to occupy the world, serve in the world, reach the world, and all that's in it, and all that comes with that. It's a big responsibility. Now, when I think about the nation, I personally have been paying attention to, and purposely the other day, because I get this news feed daily on my computer it's really helpful these different topics that I can click on to go ahead and find out more and I have to admit for over a month or two well longer than that there's a constant news feed about Nigeria and persecution and murder of Christians by the thousands in Nigeria in the last two years. So the Christian church in Nigeria, certain parts of Nigeria, are really experiencing horrible, horrible persecution. And what I'm saying is I have continually just passed over that, didn't even click on that, because I'm con so concerned about America and what's happening here, how that affects me, and I admit that. And so the other day I clicked on it and did some, a deeper dive into the Nigerian situation. And I just want to bring that to you, 
to realize that there are problems way beyond our philosophies in America, our candidates losing or winning. And there's, there are Christians in Nigeria dying. It's dangerous. And part of that deep dive I did, I realized our, the way our government works, they don't always, our government doesn't always acknowledge international Christian persecution and uh, the world just kind of looks the other way. And then the other thing I noticed is uh, governments, including America, try to say it's just civil unrest. It's not directed at Christians. That's another thing I noticed. So we need to pray for the Nigerian Christian population missionaries we have over there, any influence that could be felt, we pray for that. We pray for our nation and that as the days go forward, we could see the hand of God in our nation's capital. So then I want to come to some names. Uh, I want to continue to remember and keep in mind the Anderson family. Andy, still, he's under hospice care. He went from the hospital to the Matagor to rehab center. So thankfully, Carolyn is able to go spend all day there and one other family member. That's a blessing. But... Andy, if certainly, sometimes hospice doesn't mean someone is near death by any means. Hospice can be a one, two year uh, situation. Andy is declining. So let's continue to pray for Carolyn, the children, and of course, Andy. Thank God. Praise the Lord. Andy's he is uh, experiencing 2 Corinthians 4 where the inner man is strengthening and the outer man is declining. Dan Nelson, uh, some heart problems. You know, a lot of times we're all familiar with Everybody's familiar with the common heart issues. Bypass surgery because arteries are restricted. Maybe need a pacemaker, electrical system in the heart's not functioning. Dan has a, a real unique heart condition that caused him to go to Houston to the special unit in Memorial Hermann. Thankfully, uh, Beth is getting pretty good news on his outcome, but they're still dealing with it, still testing, should be home any time now. And of course, when you're in Houston, nobody can be there in Houston. So Beth has not been able to be with him for two weeks. Mike Mathis, which is Pat Mathis' brother, who's been here for many, many, many months, who lives in California, but he's been here. Uh, he is in the hospital in ICU, really fighting with uh, COVID. So let's pray for the family who's very concerned, but we pray that he'll make that turn. God will touch his body and he'll come through that. But very frankly, uh, when we all know that in this COVID experience, when you get to ICU, that's a serious matter. I happen to know that that's not a common thing like it used to be at the beginning of the COVID pandemic. People went to the ICU quickly. We're hearing that the, the medicine is working better and the ICU is not a quick place they go to. 
that Mike is there. And so let's pray for the Mathises and pray for Mike. <clears throat> Kevin, our Kevin, looks like needs a knee replacement. And uh, with COVID and all, the surgeon wants to wait. He's in tremendous pain. He's able to do Sunday, but that is a monumental task to be up here standing. And he pays a price all week. He's paying it today. Lots of pain. Let's pray for the situation, when that can happen, for relief to correct his situation. And then his wife, Chris, uh, she has a pretty serious lung condition that's been that's been being looked at for months and it's a pretty firm diagnosis now of a very serious lung condition that they're now trying to deal with so let's pray for chris and her health certainly there are others i am not at liberty to share some others we have others with COVID dealing with that. Uh, not that they've been in the sanctuary or in church. That's not an issue. It's really just that they're part of the church family and they're dealing with COVID. Let's bow together and pray. Father, as we come before you tonight in this midweek spiritual respite, we thank you that we can call on you. Lord, we pray for our nation. The eyes of the world have been on our nation for months. It's intensified recently. This evening, today, it just is intense. We pray that believers across this land could find, as Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, that we could find a way in the mess to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, look unto you for our immediate peace and our long-term vision of what you want us to do. But as we think about our nation, the whole world's eyes are on our nation's politics. Nigeria, the number one place right now of Christian persecution death. Lord, help us to open our eyes beyond our immediate, even national landscape. Because God so loved the world, the world, that he gave his only begotten son. Father, help us to see the world, to look out there beyond what's happening here. We pray for Mike Mathis, Andy Anderson and Carolyn, Dan Nelson and Beth, for Kevin and Chris, we're thankful for Stan that tonight he can stand up here in good health and share a word. Thank you for that. Be with Nan as she's still uh, looking for strength in what she's been through. Father, others in our own orbit, our own circle, that these names uh, spark names that we know that we're not at liberty to share. Unspoken requests that you know exactly who they are. We bring these to you. And Father, we, I pray that we would see prayer calling on your name to be the ultimate expression of care for anyone. But yet we would be open for the next level of care 
a phone call, anything we can do in relation to ministry, let us be available. In Jesus' name, amen. The first time I boarded a submarine for training exercise, I began to think that what have I done now? I looked it over from bow to stern and asked myself, am I going to board this craft and go to sea and stay calm while it makes a dive to some undetermined depth? After climbing down the ladder, seeing the crew and thinking that they have not only submerged the boat, but also resurfaced. My concerns were put aside. I use this story to illustrate the point that we have experienced some challenges to our faith. As I put my belief, our faith, in something that I did not know for certain, we are experiencing much of the same situations. As the pastor has been reminding us in recent sermons, our faith has been tested. As we look at some passages, we can find some reassurance in the work we do. In 2 Corinthians 1.24, Paul pointed out the need to stand in your faith and know that others are standing with you. When the Gideons go to schools for Bible distributions, we always go as a team and in many cases receive a warm thank you, but we, has awful, we have also had rejection. As we express our faith to people, we know that others are standing with us. In Ephesians 1.15, Paul reminded those there in Ephesus of the result of their great faith He saw the great work that was being accomplished because of their faith. Just as I saw in a crew of the submarine, a confidence of being able to maneuver the boat up and down, we need to bolster each other's faith by prayer and study. James 5, 15 and following talks about the results of praying for one another. This is needed not only for us, but for our pastor, our church, and our nation. James also wrote something else. In chapter 4, verses 7 through 8, that we must resist the devil and draw near to God. In order to accomplish this, we must be submissive to God and obey him. Let me close in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time that we have to study your word, to be together. We ask that you will strengthen us, both as an individual, but as a church, and as a group of believers who are working for you. Continue to be with us in all that we do. Be with our pastor as he leads us. Be with our church as we study and worship. And Father, above all, Right now, be with our nation through this time of turmoil. We seek calmness, Father. We seek peace and help us to achieve that. Father, in all these things, I ask in his holy name. Amen. Good evening. Uh, I want to say how great it is to have seen Stan to be able to see him in person, but also for him to be able to share with us what God has placed on his heart. I know for the last year plus, it's been, they've had a lot of stuff, he and Nan together, um, coming at them, and, and yet Stan, he's steadfast and faithful and pursuing the Lord, listening to, to what God has for him and, and proclaiming, being ready to proclaim uh, just the truth and the truths of God as he hears them and reads them as he studies them and just uh, his faithfulness and steadfastness is always something that that humbles me and and I strive uh, to to have the same you know for that to be 
the, the testimony of my life with what I see in San. So I appreciate him coming here, uh, spending a little time sharing where, where he is and what the, the truths of the scriptures and praying for us. Um, this evening I get opportunity to read for a second and maybe a longer than a second. Uh, and I want to read from 1 Corinthians 2. Uh, right now in this world, uh, I, I'm assaulted, and I'm, I want to use that word, all the time with uh, the prescription of how I need to respond, of, of how I need to do things, of the right way for me um, to, to take steps, to, to react in different scenarios. And most of it is contrary to what Scripture says. Um, there's this wisdom, you know, Paul in 1 Corinthians 2, um, Paul has just talked about the wisdom and power of God, that it is in Christ, and that um, to everyone else it seems crazy. Uh, it is folly, is what he says. Um, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. Um, and so the story of Jesus and the way that Jesus lived his life, the way that he reacted, the way that he engaged with other people is very different than the way that society is telling me to do it. Um, Jesus had an ultimate purpose that is uh, to redeem the world, to, to reconcile the world to God, to bring the world, all of creation, especially mankind, into relationship with God and show us how to walk that out uh, in our lives, that we may be more like him so that we may be more like God. And, um, and that's frankly not what the world wants for us. They, they tell us things about pursuing our own bliss, and that may, that's even a dated reference of a few years ago. It's, it's pursuing the things that, that make us feel better about ourselves and hopefully don't infringe on other people's things unless, uh, unless they are uh, things important enough and then we can just do whatever we want. Um, there's no calling to something more outside of ourselves. And so Paul, in writing the Corinthian church, uh, talks about the wisdom that is of God. And so um, I want to start off reading in one yeah, one twenty-eight, and read through chapter 2. It says, God chose what is low and despised in the world, which is not what the world is prescribing for us, low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are. Those high places, those things that exist, that have been set up and compete with God, that set themselves up in opposition to God and, and want the glory outside of the Father. It says, God chose those low things to bring to nothing those things that are, so that no human being may boast, no flesh may boast in the presence of God. We can't stand up before God and say, look what I have done. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Righteousness so that if God looks at us, we are seen as right and that he shows us the right way to live and walk with God. Sanctification that we, we may be transformed and continually be more like God as we are his image bearers, as our identity is found in Christ and ultimately in God, just as Jesus was the image of God. And redemption that what we owed the debt, the transgression, all those things and, and being away from God have been brought forth and made right. They've been redeemed. He has all those things, the wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. And I, this is Paul, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Didn't come trying to make it look pretty. I just wanted to proclaim Jesus, him crucified, and what that means for us, the implications of his death, his resurrection, and what he has called us to. Verse 3, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom. They weren't fancy, big, long, uh, $5 words, as I had a teacher once say, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, 
so that your faith may not rest in the wisdom of man or these sayings that we say, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom. Although it's not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away, but we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God, For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person, which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world and all the wisdom that comes with it, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but in himself is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. I mean, Paul is declaring here that uh, the wisdom of the world, everything that comes from the outside, and I'll use this word again, assaults us every day. It is a wisdom of men, a wisdom that um, calls us to live a certain way so that we might appear um, amazing. We might appear smart. We might appear right all the time. We might appear perfect. We would appear this way, and yet that perfection is elusive because that is based on men that will pass away. But instead, we, those of us who are mature in the message that we proclaim, impart a wisdom of the Spirit and the Holy Spirit moving uh, in our midst, that we have a reliance on God, an identity in Christ, that we are hid with Christ on high. And that wisdom gives us a place to rest, to sit, to trust, and a basis from which to move, not dictated by all the things around us, not prescribed by, uh, by others, by what society has, has said we need to be, which changes, honestly, from week to week, from month to month, and year to year. Um, not with, thrown about by every passing fad and idea, but instead, we have wisdom in the Spirit that is based on the mind of God. We can understand and know how God has created us to move. And so, uh, for me, this is very sobering and asks the question, am I relying on my own ingenuity, on my own wisdom, on my own intelligence, on my own idea and observations, or am I listening to the Spirit? Am I asking God to speak to me, to impart wisdom and knowledge of Him in His mind, that I may walk that out instead of pursuing my own things? It's, it's contrary to what the world is, is calling us to. It's contrary to that which the world is prescribing for us. It's contrary to that which the world is condemning us for. And yet, the example of Christ is that we walk in obedience to the Father, in step with the Father, and doing the things, as he says in John, that we have seen the Father do, and that we're doing the things that he has given for us to do, which is to bring him glory, as opposed to bringing a, us glory. This evening, let's, uh, let's pray this over ourselves, over our church, over our, our fellow believers, brothers and sisters in Christ, and over our community. Father, we are grateful just that you have given us your spirit. Those who, who follow you um, have your spirit dwelling and abiding in us, with us. And as, as your word says, as a deposit, a down payment for what is to come in the future that we have your presence and we can live with you now. Um, Just as we will someday. 
So God, as we walk through this world, this world of, of delights, this world of distractions, this world of, of convenience, Father, I ask that you would help us to live and walk in the wisdom of the Spirit, that as the Spirit knows your mind, we also may inquire of the Spirit to speak to us um, of your mind and your will for us. God, help me to, to listen, not to set up my own things and pursue pathways that I have made and created, but instead to hear from your Spirit, to have the wisdom to stop and to ask and to listen and to walk out what you have before me. Today, I pray that you would let my words be full of grace. God, that my words would, would be your words. God, that I would speak with your wisdom, not simply with words that sound like the, the best option. Um, God, help my heart uh, to not heed, and not to take in, not to live with um, those prescrip prescriptions of the world. God, I want to be as your scripture says, I want to walk in step with the Spirit. I want to walk in step with you and submit myself to you. God, convict me today and let me understand more of, of you and your Spirit in my life that I may walk forward um, with a renewed heart. God, I want to offer myself up as a sacrifice for worship, um, a living sacrifice to be used for your glory and your kingdom here. God, I love you. We love you. We ask that you would um, work in our hearts and our thoughts and our actions. We thank you for the example that allows us to do that in your son, Jesus. And we come to you in his mighty, powerful, redeeming, and sanctifying name, his righteous name. Amen.